ESPN published a hit piece on my guy Zach Wilson this week. I'm gonna get into it. Welcome to Y Central. Let's go. Welcome into Y Central. This article on ESPN was written by Rich Samini. It basically, he's the Jets beat writer for ESPN. It basically was just going over what happened in this tumultuous year two for Zach Wilson. Even going back into year one a little bit, but mainly uh, what happened this previous season. Let me give credit. It was a really, really well-written article. So obviously I don't like what was in there, but it was really well-researched, well, well-written. well Give credit to Rich Samini. You really should go read it. It's very interesting. Overall takeaway was the fallout that happened with Zach has nothing to do with him as a person, as a teammate, as a worker. It was completely on just the lack of production. That's it. Which is great to hear that it's not something deeper, that it's not something unfixable. It is fixable. It's just produce better. And everything's better. What was surprising to me was to read all the behind the scenes of what was going on during this season, even before a lot of the, the exterior outward problems happened. So in the article, Samini writes that Zach's training camp performance and performance weekly in practice were quote, alarmingly bad. One person inside the organization even reported that at one point, it got so bad that in one of the practices during the Broncos week, Zach only completed three passes in practice. Now, a typical NFL practice would have the quarterback attempting about 20 to 30 passes. So only completing three of those, yeah, that's a problem. So with the practice performance, training camp performance, and obviously the in-game inconsistencies, it leads to grumbling among lots of people, defense, the wide receivers, grumbling, drama. These are people's careers on the line. You know, if you're not putting up 10 catches, 100 yards as a receiver, that's money you're losing. And so if the quarterback isn't able to feed you like that, there's gonna be some grumbling. It also went into detail about how apparently the front office pre-draft evaluation of Zach was split. There wasn't unanimity among the, the Jets front office. Apparently there were some inside the organization who thought Zach was a developmental project, not worthy of day one starting maybe year three, but he needed to sit and develop. There were others like Joe Douglas, Mike LaFleur, who not only believed Zach was the number two pick, but advocated and pushed the narrative that he was better than Trevor Lawrence, that he was the best prospect in the draft. Now that one piece of information was really interesting to me, considering reports that have come out recently after LeFleur, after LeFleur's firing about his strained relationship with Zach, about how he would tell people, well, look how Josh Johnson, look how Joe Flacco, look how Mike White operated in this offense. Why can't Zach do that? So to to believe so strongly and advocate for this guy pre-draft and then to say these other things, you know, when you have the guy in the building, I feel like LaFleur should have been the one guy advocating for Zach, having his back. So clearly there was a, a strained relationship there. And by the way, the evaluation of him being better than Trevor Lawrence when it comes to physical gifts from the tape, it's not crazy from the college tape, obviously. Lawrence right now, you'd put him ahead of Zach just because of production in the second half of their second season. The article is really, really interesting. It went deeper on a lot of different things. There were some silver linings in there. Few, but there were some. One Jets player who wasn't named said this, quote, Wilson may not be as vocal as some may like. Zach has tools of greatness. He just has to believe that himself. Uh, Michael Carter, second year running back, he came in with Zach. He said this, quote, This is going to sound crazy, but I think it might have been good for him. The NFL is the first time some guys are like, Oh, 
I really have to get my bleep together. I think there are times where Zach has felt that. Other times he's been limited in what he could do, whether that's a trust thing or what. He's shown he can do pretty much everything. I believe in Zach. Former NFL quarterback Phil Simms was quoted in this article talking about Zach. And speaking on Zach's issues, he said, is this correctable? Oh my gosh, absolutely. That's a direct quote from Phil Simms. He's going to tell us the answers. You'll be able to see it when you go to training camp. If you don't say, oh wow, this is a different guy, then that will answer a lot of questions. Here are my thoughts on the article. Nobody is going to work harder this offseason than Zach. I keep saying it wasn't until year three that he made the jump in college. Now it's year three in the NFL. Maybe he'll do it now. That's what, as a fan, I like to believe. And look, the Jets have been very vocal, almost disrespectfully vocal about their plans to bring in a veteran quarterback. Maybe that's Aaron Rodgers. Maybe that's Derek Carr. So that should take some of the pressure off Zach. At the same time, Zach has been public about his desire to come in and compete every day and make that quarterback's life miserable. But regardless of the quarterback situation to begin the season, nobody is working harder this offseason than Zach Wilson. I know that. A glimmer of hope. Phil Simms says that Zach Wilson's issues are correctable. If you're a quarterback or if you're if you're a, a coach or a GM looking at your future quarterback, what issues aren't correctable? Well, a lack of work ethic, bad character, no drive to be great, really limited talent. Those things are not correctable. If you don't have talent, you don't have talent. If you don't have a work ethic or a drive to be great, you won't be great. It's impossible. Those are the things you cannot overcome. But do you know what is correctable? Footwork, processing, timing, confidence, leadership. When you have all the physical tools and add on to that a crazy work ethic, everything is correctable. That's what's so exciting about Zach's future. Everything is correctable. There's not one thing where you're just like, this guy can't overcome this. Whatever happens, this is the biggest summer of Zach Wilson's life. It's yet to be determined, his NFL future. Who knows what'll end up happening, but fail or succeed, it won't be from a lack of working for it. Sometimes it just doesn't work out, but I absolutely believe that Zach is going to right this ship. So what do you think? What are you most excited for looking forward into Zach's future, into his year three, What do you think he needs to do this offseason to really get right? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Go Cougs.